in this video we will discuss about how solenoid behaves like a bar magnet so for that let us uh, take a solenoid here this one through this solenoid current is flowing through one side it is entering to other side it is going out okay now what happened is each turn of the solenoid behaves like a small circular loop like this just now i told you that this side if current flows like this in the circular loop if we write s then it is matching with the direction of flow of current so the upper surface will be south pole lower surface is north pole so that means this turn is behaving like a small magnet similarly this loop is behaving like a small magnet having one south pole one north pole suppose this side is south pole this side is north pole similarly the other loops also this other loops also behave like small magnet so that's what i have drawn here now you see this north south will cancel each other's effect south north cancelling south north cancelling as they are very close to one another except the extreme two poles north pole south pole so that means this is behaving like a long bar magnet this one okay so that means this solenoid behaves like a bar magnet now mathematically also we will show this but theoretically this is the thing now see as we know that uh, magnets are always remaining in dipolar form that means we cannot separate the north pole of a magnet from south pole wherever we have a north pole we will have a south pole there okay uh, but in case case of charge electric charge the case was different plus charge we can completely isolate it from negative charge not necessary that wherever there will be plus there will be minus not necessary but in case of magnet it is not like that anyways uh, one thing that i uh, i'll tell you remember this one in this particular magnet when the north pole and south pole we are locating this is not exactly at the end the north pole is not exactly at the end it is little inside suppose here the south pole is suppose here inside so the distance between this north and south this is called magnetic length ml and the distance between the ends of the magnet is geometric length in short i have just represented by gl now this ratio it is nearly okay not 0.85 it is nearly equal to 0.84 okay nearly this ratio that is al that also you remember okay then for bar magnet since this time uh, some parts from this chapters are removed so that is why this derivation you have not you did not get it but you have to use this formula so that is why i am just telling you that if this is a bar magnet for bar magnet suppose this is a bar magnet uh suppose it is a south this is north pole and this is the axis axial line of the bar magnet and here if i consider a point p then the magnetic field generated at point p due to this magnet is called axial point just like in electric dipole you got axial point equatorial point similarly this point p is an axial point so for axial point this is the expression for magnetic field total magnetic field at point p for axial point okay what is that expression mu not by 4 pi is a constant number 2 m by r cube now r means it is the distance of this point p from the center of the bar magnet means if this is the midpoint of the bar magnet if this is point p then this distance is r okay and m is the dipole moment all right so now this is for this expression is applicable for this kind of bar magnet now we will see for solenoid also whether we get this expression if we get this expression that means the solenoid is behaving like a bar magnet mathematically we will show this one okay so let us consider this solenoid and what i have done here solenoid this thing is like a cylindrical thing right so here i have uh, drawn a cylinder and the wires of the solenoids are like this on the cylinder okay then we consider an considered an axial point 
this one point P is the axial point this is the central line of the or the line which passes through the center or midpoint of the cylinder or solenoid so this distance is R okay the length of the solenoid is 2L suppose if it is 2L and if this is the line passing through the center this side will be L this side is also L 1L another L this is 2L then on this solenoid we consider a small region this part the thickness of this region is dx thickness is dx and from the central line the distance of this considered system is x ok now suppose if we consider this dx as a circular ring or circular coil carrying current then what will be the magnetic field at point P we have done this in the application of bias Weber's law there is a circular coil point P was considered here like this ok you may I think you know this one so at point P what was the expression for magnetic field this was the expression for magnetic field if we consider this as a small ring ok now here what we are doing we are finding first we will find out the magnetic field at point P due to this dx length and then we will integrate it to cover the whole solenoid ok. So, ok now magnetic field due to elementary length this one means dx can be given by db db because it is a small magnetic field so db now see for this actually we are using this expression only no this thing we are applying here so see mu naught by 2 mu naught by 2 fine this portion i have written like this the reason is that okay see here in this case what was x x was the distance of point p from the circular loop ok in this case where is our circular loop this part what is the distance of p and this part isn't it r minus x from the center from the center p is at a distance of r from the center this part is at a distance of x so the distance of this part from p will be how much r minus x so in place of x square here i have written r minus x whole square Okay, and radius of this solenoid or circular loop whatever you say it was a and then 3 by 2 here i a square as it is but in place of capital n i have written this one what was capital n here number of turns here small n means small n means it is the number of turns per unit length means in unit length this many turns are present but how much length we are considering now dx so in dx length what will be the total number of turns n into dx unit of the method unit length means this many d this many turns dx length how many turns this into dx so in place of n we will write n dx ok n is the number of turns per unit length now this expression we are uh, calculating for for dx length we have to integrate it but before we go for integration we will do some uh, assumption here suppose this point p is a very distant point if it is so then this x will be very very small as compared to r and the radius a will also be very very small as compared to r so as compared to r we can neglect x and a means x and a can be considered as zero so what we will have uh, only r square and here the power is 3 by 2 ok now this 2 this 2 get cancelled we get r cube like this then we will integrate it now see we are integrating which part here only dx is the variable rest things are constant so rest things can come out inside integration we have dx 
we get from we need some uh, limit so this limit will be from this end to this end because the ds is moving from this side to this side so this side means suppose if this is the central line this side will be negative this side will be positive no so that is why we are taking the limit from minus l to plus l minus l to plus l the integration of ds means x x then what shall we write upper limit minus lower limit so upper limit integration of ds is giving us integration of ds is giving us x upper minus lower limit uh, lower limit is minus l upper limit is plus l then what shall we do upper limit minus lower limit means l minus minus l so minus minus plus so l plus l means this 2l so that's what i have written here 2l this one 2l okay fine then then we will modify this one because we have to get this shape right to prove that this is a bar magnet so to get the shape of it what we can do it do is 2l we got from here then we are just rearranging it mu not mu not okay fine this one n 2l i'm writing it together i i a square a square but but with that a square two th uh, two terms we are introducing here pi and 2 so at the same time down also we have to introduce this pi and 2 so that's what we have done pi and this 2 we are introducing newly 2r cube 2r cube fine we can do this that means in the numerator and denominator in both we are multiplying by 2 pi so after multiplying this what we can do is this is like i into a current into area current into area gives us magnetic moment but this is only for one turn but how many turns we have here we have n turns no capital n turns suppose this is the expression suppose generally uh, magnetic moment is what it is current in area into current i but for n turns it will be m into i into a okay n magnetic moment so this magnetic moment is generally n into i into a now in this case which one is n this one is n because the total length of the solenoid was 2l number of turns in unit length is n in unit length n turns are there so in 2l length 2l length means the whole solenoid how much will be the number of turns n into 2l and this n into 2l is nothing but capital n okay so this is capital N, this is I A square, the whole thing, I A, I pi A square means area only A. So this whole thing, this thing, this thing gives us this value actually. And this is nothing but capital N, N, magnetic dipole moment. Can you follow this one? Once again, I am telling you, magnetic dipole moment, we are using this formula, okay? Generally, it is I into A, but for N terms, it is N into I into A. Now, N means it is N into 2L. 2L is the length of the solenoid, small n is the number of terms per unit length. So, the total thing gives us capital N. I means I only. A means pi A square. Area. So, this thing gives us capital N. That means this thing gives us capital N. This one. Okay. So finally, we got this expression. 2 pi 2 gives us 4 pi, then pi r, r cube will be down. So this was the expression that I told you that it is the expression which we get for bar magnet. But for solenoid also, we are getting the same expression. That means what? The bar magnet or the solenoid, this one, no? same expression. This one. Hmm? So that means the solenoid behaves like a bar magnet. Okay. Uh, one small thing I will uh, tell you here. Next topic is Earth's magnetic field. We will discuss about it in the next video. But here, little bit of it I will tell you. Suppose in Earth's magnetism, what happens is the Earth is revolving around its uh, own axis. It is moving. It is uh, rotating about its own axis. So what we know that um, 
due to this rotation at the center of earth a magnetic field is generated okay so that is why we say that earth also behaves like a magnet and it is seen that okay let's just focus this diagram suppose this is earth it is revolve it is rotating about this own axis with an angular speed omega like this due to this rotation a magnetic field is generated at the center of earth and it is seen that this is the north pole of earth this is the south pole of earth geographic north pole geographic south pole due to rotation the magnetic field which is created in earth suppose we considered that magnetic field as a huge bar magnet okay it is seen that the south pole of this huge bar magnet is towards the geographic north pole of earth since it is a magnet it has a magnetic south pole this is towards the geographic north and magnetic north pole is towards the geographic south but they are not coinciding because if this is earth north pole geographic north geographic south magnet is like this okay this is geographic so, uh, magnetic south this is magnetic north okay towards north this is magnetic south is towards the geographic north but not coinciding so if this is the axis this is a magnetic axis they are making some angle this much angle the angle is a small angle around in some book it is given 20 degree some book 22 degree so it is around 22 degree suppose okay it is it ranges from 15 to because the value is not uh, specified anyways so remember that this is uh, how earth magnetism is created and that is why when we keep a magnet suspended in earth or on earth surface any magnet any magnet if you keep it on earth surface suspended then the north pole of the magnet this north pole will be attracted by the south pole south pole means magnetic south pole of earth can you follow so this mag this end pole will go this side magnetic south pole where is magnetic south pole this one okay wait this magnet suppose this is a magnet any magnet which is kept on earth surface suspended this side is north pole this side is south pole so this north pole will be attracted by the magnetic south pole of earth right so this north pole will go like this and this south pole will be attracted by the magnetic north pole of earth south pole goes like this so ultimately what will be the alignment of the magnet alignment of the magnet will be like this like this right this side is what north this side is what south so can we say see this north pole of the magnet is showing or uh, towards the geographic north pole and the south pole of the magnet is towards the geographic south pole so that is why a magnet gives us direction when we keep a magnet suspended the north pole of the magnet shows as geographic north pole and the north south pole of the magnet gives us geographic south pole because the earth's magnet is present in this way south towards north north towards south that is why i hope this part this part is clear okay and field lines these are field lines see if it is a bar magnet we know that the field lines come out from the north pole goes to south and inside magnet south to north so similarly for earth magnetism also there will be some field lines from north to south north to south like this okay and inside there is from south to north like this all right so this is a uh, earth magnetism then we have some elements related to earth magnetism three elements that one we'll discuss in next video